welcome to Haken, an Animal Crossing podcast, your podcast dedicated to all things Animal Crossing. Episode 213 is brought to you by Squee of Tortuga, Nigis of Haven, and Julie Erdfeldt, some of our newest Patreon patrons. This episode is also possible thanks to our producers, For the Whim, Tiger Yuri, Tab, and Mikey Toe. This week, Nina, Sergio, and I will be telling some quick stories about our playtime, and then we get into a huge discussion about things we wish we got in Animal Crossing New Horizons. So to begin, hello, Sergio, how are you doing? Hi, Chewie, I'm doing pretty good. You know what I noticed, though? It's December. Well, I I knew that already. (laughs) But it feels like November. Does it feel like November to you, or, or is it just crazy me? I don't even know what it feels like anymore. <laughs> it's been <laughs> it just long feels since December. like yeah, yeah. It, I mean, I guess it's December. It just feels like it's just happening, you know. Mm. Okay. Yeah, like okay, we're getting Christmas and New Year's coming up, but to me, it kind of feels like it's Thanksgiving coming up. I don't know why. I I'm behind. Oh, I'm lagging. Okay, Turkey Day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Nina, how are you doing? Oh, not great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you gotta eat the cookies they, they get that sugar rush going it's been a really long day and it's only monday um i'm tired uh, when are you on break <laughs> wednesday is my last day i'm so excited okay. almost there yeah. well that's good so i just have okay, to make it two break. more days yeah i really need a break <laughs> <laughs> how long do you get um Oh, not, I mean, I think we go back, like, the second, which is, like, the the first Monday, you know, we're back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know. Not long enough. Just long enough to, to like the children again. <laughs> <laughs> How long will that last? To remember though? that I, to remember that I love them. Um, it'll last until the end of the year. It'll be good. Okay. Just that stretch. And then Summer Nina comes back. Summer Nina. <laughs> the so ultimate exciting. Nina. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Nina, I'm going to wake you up with this nice little icebreaker here. It's it's a fun one. It's pretty cute. Um, Treehouse Blanket Fort Igloo. <gasps> you have to build one, destroy one, and live in one. What is your choice? Oh. Build one, destroy one. I have to build one, destroy, destroy one, one, and, live, and in one. live in one. Okay. And your options are Treehouse Blanket Fort Igloo. I definitely want to live in a treehouse. Definitely, mm. with all my bird friends, I will become <laughs> one with the pigeons. <laughs> yeah, pigeon fact. Yeah. And my <laughs> and my cockatiels. I'll have all the cockatiels. I've always wanted like a pet crow too. I think they're really cool. <laughs> I'll just mm-hmm. be a bird lady <laughs> up in the tree. <laughs> um, I want to build a fort blanket, blanket for it. They're nice and easy. I've made plenty of those as a child with my brothers. Mm-hmm. And I think it'd be really fun to destroy an igloo. Like, give me a pick pickaxe, like a chisel. I, uh, uh-huh. you know, I'll turn it into something beautiful while I destroy it. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Those are good options. Yeah. Good, good options. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nina, your turn to ask, I think, Sergio this week, right? Okay. Yes. Sergio. Yes. You walk into a carnival or state fair. Or something similar. Mm -hmm. Can you visualize it? Yes. The sounds, the smells, the people. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) (laughs) What is the first food booth that you make a beeline to that you cannot skip? Mm, Okay. So I'm thinking of those, what are they called in English? Uh, Caramelized apples. Caramel apples. Yes. Mm, those are good yes uh yeah for some reason when i feel like a carnival or like those type of venues i i imagine those and, and they're pretty good they're pretty good what are I they guess, called in spanish uh from chihuahua where i'm from they're called chapeteadas oh mm-hmm. and we definitely had a lot of those over there okay that sounds amazing <laughs> yeah no. And I just want one so bad. Now. <laughs> <laughs> They're usually I'm the real, red ones, right? Too. But I wonder if they can make the green ones too. No, with the green, it's really good because it's like mm-hmm. tart and the sweet at the same time. Oh. Yeah. I yes. love that combination. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, man, I have such a sweet tooth right now. <laughs> Nina talking about her cookies earlier, and now this. I, I want, I want it all. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that we need to have like a Haken um, movie and sweets night, like hot cocoa oh. and and a holiday mm. movie. Yes, <laughs> that sounds so good. All right, Sergio, you are up. I think you're asking me. Yes, I have a question for you. Uh, winter related, you know, it's a. Mm. Uh, usually, it's colder in most places, and you you don't you usually don't want that. Sometimes it's nice, but sometimes it gets to the point where you need to warm yourself up. So, what video game power up item mm -hmm. or character would you use to warm yourself up during the winter? Oh, hmm. I guess instantly I just go to. Uh, but I don't think this would be a good one to warm me up. <laughs> but I go to, like, Breath of the Wild, the magic wands that you could steal from the wizards, oh. like, specifically the fire one. Yes. Oh, yeah. I guess that would make it easy to light things, right? Yeah. A but, little dangerous. I mean, I feel like you kind of have to be a little stationary for that and, you know, practice fire safety. Yes. Too hard. Too <laughs> difficult. <laughs> um, okay. So, instead... To keep me warm. Oh, man, this is so tough. I go to all of the Animal Crossing coats, too, because they're so cute. Oh. <laughs> um, but what is the best option? Uh, so it's a video game, right? It's yes. It's be a video game. Yes. Power up. Power up or... character. It could be a character. Character. You know what? I have been feeling really hyped about the new Kirby game. The, the 3D oh, one. What's yes. it called? Forgotten Place, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> A forgotten title, Kirby. Um, and I really like when he gets the little fire power up where he's got the little fiery, spiky hair. Yes. That's the one I'm going to go with. Oh, okay. Oh. There you go. I feel like he's nice and warm with yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. And he looks real cute. And I guess I'll look like Kirby too, since that's the power. Yeah. That's adorable. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yep. Nice. I like that nice. option. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, before we get into our short little story times, Nina, remind us what's coming up with seasonal Nook items. Mm, I'm excited. Uh, so starting on the 15th, which I believe is Wednesday um, for December and also June. So winter slash summer solstice items are upcoming starting the 15th through the 22nd. And there are four items for each hemisphere, two mm. old ones and two new ones. So keep an eye oh. out for those. I'm very excited about some of them. Okay. Wait. So, hmm. I do know that, you know, we're getting our northern hemisphere ones. It's winter. And I remember the southern hemisphere ones. So do they, in the southern hemisphere, are they getting, like, summer, a couple new summer items during this time? Do you know? I or is so. it, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two two new ones also for them. Okay, so it's, like, four items that are new. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I didn't even think of that. Amazing. I mean, unless you, I mean, you, I guess you could have a Southern Hemisphere friend send you them, or mm -hmm. if you wanted to time travel, I guess you could. But if you're <laughs> staying in the same hemisphere and do not have a Southern Hemisphere or Northern Hemisphere friend, then it's only two items right now, two new items. So we're all messaging Squee. <laughs> Poor Squee. <laughs> just, we can just only message. order five things a day. <laughs> no, but. You can send oh, like two things per day for, for to people to Never other people. Mind. Yeah, that's true. So, so we're we're covered. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Squee will just get all of the new things in multiples from us. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, that's awesome. Uh, let's get into short story time. We all have little stories today. Do you? Who wants to start today? I can start. I guess I'll go. Oh, or, no, Sergio. Yeah, Sergio's <laughs> doing it. <laughs> All right, I'll start. Uh, this was recent. This happened on Saturday. Um, it was a busy day for me overall. Um, I knew I had to go see KK because I'm not chewy. I don't miss the shows. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> low blow. Sorry, chewing. I had the KK I had hater. <laughs> Boom, roasted. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I knew I had to go, even if it was late, and and I did go, and I got a nice new song. It was a pretty strange one, but it was cool. Um, but since I was there, um, I noticed that it was snowy now, and I found one of the snowballs uh, laying around. So I thought, oh well, might as well uh, build the uh, the snowman, right? And so I knew where one of the snowballs was, and I said, okay, I know where the other one usually pops up. And I went there, and it wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And I just kept going all around my island looking for it, and I found all the diggy spots. I'm glad I did because I found two gyroids, thankfully. Nice. Uh, but I also found all the fossils. I found some pretty sneaky weeds lying around that I, I got rid of. And I just kept looking for it, and, and I could not find it. I was playing for over half an hour. And finally, I found it, and it was close to where the other snowball was, but it was sort of hiding in the flowers, like it was inside a, a oh. patch of flowers, uh, blue roses. And I just didn't see it, or it was so like right in the middle that I just didn't see it. <laughs> and and I I kind of I was just walking around, and I knocked into it, and I mm -hmm. that's how I found it. Uh, yeah, luckily, um, I had even gone into the museum just to like reset them, but. I guess that didn't help. Uh, but yeah, I built a snowman. I got a perfect one. Uh, no cheating. I just <laughs> just by eyeballing it. And yeah, it was it was a very nice experience. I was very tired. I was exhausted. But I, I wanted to find the snowball. And I did. And it was good. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. Sometimes they can be really sneaky. I feel like for the most part, they're close to each other. Mm. But... Every once in a while, you're just like running around. And you're like, I don't know where the second one is. Yeah, it just doesn't exist. You know. <laughs> yeah, I I can add to that story. My well, with Ooh. two little stories. My <laughs> first snowman. You know how <laughs> when the snowballs accidentally get just a little too close <laughs> together. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I mean, my very first snowman of the year was definitely upside down this year. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, I wanted to be a model. <laughs> Aww. So sad. You still can, buddy. You still can. Uh, he's in like this real <laughs> awkward spot, too. It was just bad. <laughs> yeah. It's well, not good. I mean, it happens. <laughs> uh, I've and I'm remembering that I need to f like open up a big spot for snowball. I have like nowhere for snowballs to spawn right now. Mm. Um, so I, I'm thinking about tearing up a uh, flower patch I kind of have in the back of my um town to make some snowmen. Right. But I I forgot that I have to do that. It's kind of a bummer that they won't go through flower like they won't spawn yeah, in, right. in flower patches. Mm. Yeah, I, I I think a lot of people kind of run into that issue this time of year where maybe they have too many paths around their island, just like mm -hmm. not enough of the grassy areas, the snowy areas, basically, you yeah. know? Yeah. And so some people are just like running around and they aren't seeing snowballs throughout the season. And, you know, for some... Not a huge deal. They're maybe they already have the recipes and things, yeah. so they're not really looking to get them. And maybe they've already completed that Nook Miles task or goals, you know, that has them. So, yeah, not a huge deal. But others are just like, oh, but there's like kind of some fun little dialogue that you can get when you make them upside down yes. on accident. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's fun to make a little, like, snow person. I mean, they turn into graveyards, basically, because they're always melting <laughs> right after. <laughs> but it, it's cute, you know? It's a cute little extra piece of decoration. And if you, of course, haven't gotten the recipes, there are a lot of really good ones that yeah. they give you. Yes. So it's worth it. Uh, to like just clear out a space and have a nice little snow field yeah and I've my space that I do want to clear out kind of has a lot of hybrid flowers on it so I guess I can just move them behind a cliff and kind of hide them for the season mm. um, but yeah it's it's something something we all got to work on this winter <laughs> yeah yeah uh, did you have another story Nina yes I um in my eternal <laughs> in my eternal battle against Cyrus, 
my new arch enemy. Wow. <laughs> um, I so I have been putting out all these brand new items from the 2.0 update around my island, like the little topiaries and um, some of the glowing moss, like rocks and seats and things that look kind of old school or old timey, and. Um, I I got the recipe for the like decrepit trees that are nice and spooky mm. for my graveyard, and mm-hmm. all of these items, um, well, most of these items can't be customized uh, by yourself. You have to take them to Cyrus, and they have to change with the season, or else they look really weird. Particularly the little topiaries, like they mm-hmm. have seasonal seasonal customizations. So um, I had to turn them into, like, the brown one for fall. And now that the snow has settled, I have to turn them to the, like, greenish, like, mintish, whitish, wintry-looking ones. Mm -hmm. And it's all these items that I had to, like, gather up around my town and lug over to Harv's Island and then (laughs) one by one (laughs) change them from winter. And Cyrus has to do his dance every single time. (laughs) And then he also charged me, like, $5,400 for each one. So... (laughs) I might be deleting some of <laughs> these items because it was a lot that I'm going to have to do four times a year at least, maybe five times if spring and summer mm. have more than one green. I don't know. I've got to look into that. But um, Maybe th- at this point, mm-hmm. the investment that you need to make is the biggest storage. Did you do that yet? Oh, and then just make all of yeah. them. <laughs> yeah, make them all in all the seasonal <sighs> colors. And just hold on to them in Gosh, your house. it's like a whole afternoon of talking with Cyrus. Uh-huh. And then you're done for the might rest be of your life. It. That might be worth it. <laughs> I just think it's super interesting that a lot of these new items you, you can't or are, are not like self-sustaining. You've got to get Cyrus to do it. Yeah, it's true. So many of them are just... Uh, it's, it's a strange decision to some extent because you're mm-hmm. like... They could have given you a little bit more power with these. Maybe if they were DIY recipes, you know, you don't really have to worry about that because you can just craft it and then customize it yourself. But, I mean, since it's stuff that you can buy, it just works that way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I understand. It's just... It's it's just gonna be an ordeal, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it won't last too long after that one weekend that you spend making that's it a good idea. every season thing. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, your your storage is gonna be so full though. It is. I, I haven't yet upgraded to my the biggest one. I only have like around two thousand five hundred items or so. Like I'm not. I passed three thousand the other day, and oh, I'm just really? like, oh, I am filling this up way too quickly. <laughs> oh my gosh! What? So the mm-hmm. last one, where I think I have it up to four thousand right now. What? And the last one is six, five thousand. Five. Okay, so I'm mm-hmm. not really there yet, but maybe one day. Yeah, you'll you'll be there soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, my little story was that I missed a couple days of Animal Crossing. Mm. And I've never been so tempted to time travel back. Oh, um, backwards time traveling. <laughs> I was very tempted to do that. And then I was like, no, I'm not Nina. I'm not a, a cheater. <laughs> cheater? <laughs> Look, at least I'm safe cheating. I'm cheating, cheating within the rules. <laughs> you're cheating and it's illegal. It no, can't happen. I haven't not done it in, in a very book. long time, by the way. <laughs> oh. But all, all of that said, like, I was uh, I was specifically tempted because the night before I had finally experienced a little bit of rain in the morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that was the first thing. I was like, finally, I'm oh. going to get some extra gyroids, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. And then that night I also had shooting stars. Oh. And I was like, oh, cool. I can oh. get some extra fragments as well. <laughs> and so I didn't get a chance to play. The day after, oh. I was just uh, very busy with things. And so, and then, it, I mean, that busyness honestly continued on through the next day because I couldn't play that next day either. And so I'm sitting on day um, three here and I'm like, oh, I 
barely have time to play today. Like, just w- dead of night. Literally <laughs> as late as possible before <laughs> before I'm, like, going to bed. So I'm like, okay, I think I'm just going to have to forget the time travel things. I, I, I mean... It was very tempted. I thought I was wow. going to do it, honestly. I oh, thought wow. I was going to. And then I said, you know what? No, I'm, I don't even, I barely have time to play these next couple of days. And it's true. I honestly logged in, I'd say post midnight were, were the logins. And I, I guess to some extent I did time travel, but Uh-oh. here's the thing. Whoa. The truth I is time coming zones. out, Sergio. I, <laughs> It wasn't like time travel, time travel. It was like I literally was in California and I changed time zones because right now I'm in mountain time. (laughs) And then when I got to the game, it was Saturday, Sergio. And I was like, 1230 is what my switch is going to say, but it's 1130 here. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what? I'll change my time zone. That's fair. (laughs) Right? (laughs) So I did change my time zone to Pacific time. During that, and I got my song. Oh, okay. Which, uh, okay. What did good. he give me? Polka. He gave me KK oh. Polka. Oh, nice. Yeah. Sergio, so, what song did you get? Uh, I forget the name. I'm sorry, but it's very, very strange. I, I liked oh. it a lot, though. I got Maybe. slacky this time around because I Ooh. actually put in the recommendation. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, the one you wanted. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. So, it's um, KK Fugue. Oh. oh, okay, yeah, that yeah, one. yeah. Mm-hmm. I, that was the first one I got from oh. KK Slider. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so anyways, a little bit of time travel, but not technically, because I was literally in a different time zone. Yeah, so. yeah, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and my Switch is actually still on Pacific time right now, so I was like, oh, oh no, I already played Animal time Crossing. time traveling again. I'm, I'm going to just, I, I think I'm just going to, like, change it back in the morning and be like okay now i can play now that i'm back on my normal time but here's the other thing the reason i don't want to time travel too is because i know it'll mess up your little newsletter things uh yeah and i'm like no i I can't have that i want these newsletters forever (laughs) even though i think it only saves a certain amount but i've been taking screenshots of them now so oh that's a good idea i haven't opened mine in a long time yeah, they're cute. I love them. They are There's cute. a really nice little uh, picture for the end of uh, Happy Home Paradise. I mean, oh, it's not like really? anything incredibly special, but I think Sergio would very much approve. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's my little story time. Barely got to play over the weekend, and the two times I did was very late at night. <laughs> now, you did the um, right thing, though. You you went to see KK. That's good. Yeah, I mean, worth it. Yeah. <laughs> worth it. Yeah. See, Sergio, the problem isn't that I don't play on Saturday night. It's that KK doesn't play late enough on Saturday night. <laughs> He's headlining. He should be on till 2 in the morning. <laughs> I agree with that. Yeah. At least. That's how concerts yeah. should work. <laughs> All right. Uh, well... Let's get into our big conversation for this episode. We, Sergio, you came up with this idea and basically you said, you know, we know what is in New Horizons and now it, I think it's time to make our wishes about what we wish we got in right. New Horizons. Right. So since it's this pretty it. safe this to say, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty safe to say this is it. This is exactly the game. Um, oh. I... It's to the point where they have added in the holidays, and that, I think, was going to be the big indicator for me, where Mm. as soon as the holidays are just, like, in officially and you can time travel to them any year in from now until forever, I think that's when it's going to be over. And so now that that's the thing, it's over. Yeah, this is so this is the complete rare. version of New Horizons. Pretty great version. I really am happy with it. But there, there's some stuff we want. We, if we're being honest <laughs> with ourselves, <laughs> um, Sergio, you came up with this idea. Why don't you kick us off here? Sure thing. And let's see. Looking at my list, I do think this is the one I want the most out of the three. So it makes sense. It's the uh, my biggest wish uh, for New Horizons was some type of implementation of the Street Pass feature that we had in New Leaf. 
um oh what was the oh main street right yeah, yeah. Uh, it was the... a, it was up north of main street and it was the happy home showcase there you go yes thank you that's in in of course it would be with digby digby has to represent that so i i you know the the switch doesn't have a street pass so you might be thinking well how can we implement something like that and i have two solutions i think they're both pretty unique and cool one would be that nintendo themselves would distribute some special homes it could either be for special characters or just like random homes in general that they could distribute they could have different themes and when we're talking about different themes this opens up the potential for uh, collaborations or cross promotions with companies. You know, for example, uh, we know that Wendy's did their own New Horizons Island, right? <laughs> so maybe Wendy's, if they wanted to, they could put out a, a New Horizons home uh, and Nintendo could work with them and distribute it uh, online, basically. Uh, that would be a nice way to to get homes here and there every day or a couple of week. That would be a nice way to to get that area populated. Another way is if you when you design your home, you can sort of volunteer to have it optional uh, and it could be distributed to people in your friends list. Um, and, you know, since we have a lot of friends, maybe it could be sort of random and you could get one every day or at least a couple a week. And depending on how many friends you have, it could get homes from there randomly. And if they did both of these, you know, official Nintendo homes and then homes from your friends, uh, that showcase would fill up pretty quickly and it would be a nice way to get new items and to see how people design their homes and the layouts and everything i really wanted this feature it would have been very nice to see yeah honestly this is like street pass in general is the biggest thing i feel the switch is missing yes as it you know being a hybrid handheld home console they definitely focus more on like the home console aspects to it in a big way and that's fine, but I'm just like, I'm still taking my Switch wherever I go. I yeah. just took it with me to California and lucked out that the time change helped me see KK Slider. But, <laughs> you know, I'm traveling with it, and I would love to street pass people who have their Switches around, you know? Yeah. So it, it, it's such a cool little feature. I mean, to, to a big extent, they're like large swaths of the U.S. and other areas that just don't get a lot of street pass just because a lot of people don't have the same console. You know, they're not walking around with it regularly. And right. I I think I got, I lucked out because that feature was out right when I was in college. I had a lot of fun passing people just like on my campus. A lot of people carried around their 3DSs. And I was going to like Comic Con every year too. Oh, yeah. So there you go. that was a huge point. But you bring up a really good point about like possible ways they could distribute this stuff still because they did use what they called spot pass right. in the past, where uh, and it's funny because like they they were <laughs> every time I'd like go to McDonald's or something that was a spot pass yeah. place yeah. <laughs> where you could just like have your 3ds get some information from games there and so when you would get these places every once in a while nintendo would distribute things like reggie's house in new leaf you know really cool always regretted apparently not saving that house so oh. i could keep it forever <sighs> i don't know how i made that mistake <laughs> but you know, I felt like they would come up with some sort of way to make this and then bring back Digby with the yes, cute little raincoat. Right? Mm. I don't know. Yeah. And now, I mean, maybe even if they don't bring, I mean, they'd have to bring back Digby. What if, who am I kidding? <laughs> they could fly us to a special little island. Oh. Digby is there. And Digby is like, hey, there's a bunch of cool little houses here for you for you to check out. Come and, come and see them. Yeah. You know? That would be really cute. It'd be the cutest. Oh, it's such a good feature. And the coolest part about it, like, in, in case anybody doesn't know. So, Street Pass, you'd pass people, some data would be shared between your 3DS consoles. And it would depend on, like, what games you played and everything. But if you both had Animal Crossing, your houses would appear in this place called the Happy Home Showcase. You could then visit their houses. You'd see the exterior that they had and everything they decorated with inside. But then you could order any items that were orderable. There's yes. always those items that are like, nope, can't buy that. 
But <laughs> anything that you could buy, you could order there. And you, I mean, guess what the limit was? Five, yep. of course. <laughs> you could order up to five things a day. So it was a really cool way to just like share things without making any contact whatsoever, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's amazing. Um, Nina, how would you feel about Street Pass? I I liked it. I really only had good luck with it if I like went to the airport or something. Hmm. Um, because Atlanta is kind of a driving town, so it's not like Mm -hmm. people were walking around with it in their pockets. Um, so it was kind of hit or miss for me. Like, yes, if I would go to a convention, it was awesome. Or yes, if I was traveling, it was awesome. But um, mm-hmm. most of the year, it was kind of just me playing those little mini games <laughs> because I wasn't oh. getting visitors, you know, yeah. true, um, which true. were hard to play without visitors. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I think that would be nice if they could if they could kind of find a workaround for um, not passing by people. I have so many ideas for what they could do. <laughs> we could go forever on it, but Nina, what what's something you would you would wish we got in New Horizons? Oh, I um was kind of looking through my old sketchbook where I was drawing all these like big ideas for for our Animal Crossing game that we didn't have a name for at the time. Mm-hmm. And one mm-hmm. of my favorite ones is still the idea of severe weather. <laughs> like I know oh. we get <laughs> fog and some thunder and lightning now in this game, but I want like severe weather that would affect um, maybe homes. Maybe it would affect plants. Like you'd have to replant some trees or something because they'd get broken. Oh, wow. um, or like you'd have to help patch a roof with a with a villager. <laughs> Maybe they get like a really bad leak or something like that. Um, it'd be really cool if you would have like some catchable creatures, like some hurricane fish or something. Mm. <laughs> Maybe that's like you know encouraging children to go out during <laughs> hurricanes, <laughs> which is not good. But I think it'd be so cool to have severe weather, like so that so that it gives you kind of something to keep working on with your island and maybe it's something you could toggle on and off like if you have the most amazing island and you don't want anything to happen to it Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. But one of my favorite parts when I was little of Sim City <laughs> was when like the tornadoes <laughs> and the fire would come through <laughs> and you'd have to like oh, fix no. things, you know. Um, I don't know, like kind of like how villagers used to move in on your path, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> just mm-hmm. right down yeah. in the middle of your path. Yep. Um, yeah. And then Isabel could come on come on over like the speakers in the morning and be like, gosh, that was a real bad storm last <laughs> night, wasn't it? Let's all, you know, van together and, and pick up all the sticks or, you know, whatever. Uh-huh. I think it'd be fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think it would need something like that, honestly, just to make it like a little bit of a group effort because, you know, they don't want to make yeah. light of, of course, like very real natural disasters. Yes, no, 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 they're not are... that bad. No one, <laughs> it's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, so i think that would be good though like if isabel was like hey weather got a little bit <laughs> a little bit wild over the night let's all get together and clean up some stuff yeah. that and look that it's got part wrecked. of living on a desert island so you're gonna yeah. get hurricane it's a very things. real part of it yeah, uh-huh. yeah. True. <laughs> mm-hmm. and honestly what i like to that extent is you know maybe give some people some awareness that the climate has changed there you go to experience some Mm-hmm. more radical things and smog <laughs> uh, yeah yeah you have to carry around a lantern on certain days because it's so foggy like oh, i just think that'd be so much that'd fun. Be so good yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's a definitely a cute idea <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if cute is the right idea thinking I mean, about cute, it now uh, but I, yeah you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's an idea that Maybe we'd welcome. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Oh my gosh! If it was super windy, like the real little villagers can't go outside, <laughs> get blown away. Or if they're like having trouble walking, you know, yeah, you yeah, see them yeah. kind of like leaning into the wind. Oh, it would be so cute. <laughs> <laughs> We're back to cute. Them. You could push them. You know, you could help push Aww. them home. <laughs> yeah. 
That's my it's, idea. It's perfect. We Hire me, it. Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but the best. <laughs> All right. I think I've got to start with like the most obvious one that I wish we had. 4v4 minigame mode. Mm. Um, oh, minigames in general. But like, you know, it's an eight player game. We can make it 4v4, Nintendo. You can make it free for all too. One against eight. It, it doesn't really matter. But <laughs> I just feel like it, it's just, it feels like it's missing at this point. It feels like we could have had a lot of really fun little mini games, especially like, and I don't know, maybe it's just that the team felt that Amiibo Festival got hit pretty hard critically. Uh, nobody liked it. <laughs> And they took that the wrong way where I was like, yeah. no, people still like mini games. It just didn't quite work as well as you wanted it with yeah. Amiibo Festival. You know, <laughs> there's still a lot of fun to be had there. So I don't know. I, I just want that to be an option for people to play. Just like have some way to change it up because, you know, we've got a lot of decorating and collecting and the life sim aspects to Animal Crossing. And sometimes you're like, I want to play with the things that in a different way. I want to interact with this world in a different mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mini games would have done that. And uh, it would have been just fun to hit that little acorn car thing with a squeaky hammer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Sergio, what's your next one? All right. For the next one, I'm going with Gracie Grace. The oh. you know the high end, mm. highest of highest ends retail store uh, from New <laughs> Leaf and uh, City Folk. So uh, it was pretty cool to to have to keep playing the game and spending money just to unlock that. I don't know, it felt pretty fancy, and it kind of was. I mean, you, you it's definitely a mood in there, and it, you know it would be like a nice extra challenge, something else to look forward to as you're playing more and more of the game, especially um like in New Leaf that Gracie also sold some clothing items and in a lot more furniture items too than in in okay. city folks so i mean I'm, I'm sure it would be even more so in New Horizons. you could also get them customized by Cyrus like Nina loves doing um <laughs> I feel like he should charge more for that because you know it's they're expensive items to begin with. He doesn't. He probably needs like some insurance or something to, <laughs> to make sure he doesn't mess them up. So he's gonna charge you more. I think that kind of makes sense too. Uh, but yeah, it would be very cool to have more items, more fancy items, and of course we would have Gracie back in general. So there could be more backstory. She could go to the roost, and we could get to know her better that way. Um, so it would be a nice way to get the character back in another store. Um, more expensive or more... I mean, who doesn't want more chances to get different items that we don't have yet or furniture yeah. series? Especially new ones, too, if they could add them. She'd be a good one to work with brands, too, like you were saying earlier. Like, that's so up Gracie's alley to be, like, <laughs> you know, kind of selling <laughs> yeah. out and working with a bunch oh, of yeah. different types. It'd be cool. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, I feel like she she's kind of the only one that didn't get a return at this point, like a lot of special characters did with the RV park, you know? Oh, right. Yeah. But we're not going to see her at Harv's Island. She, she is not about oh, no. that. No, no. <laughs> Have she either is... of you invited her to Nooks? I, not a, to, you mean Brewster's, Yeah, right? I'm sorry. Yep, yep, yep Brewster's. No. I have not. I think I should do that. Yeah. I, I did scan her in at Harv's Island, like on the Photopia thing. Ooh, so okay. the, the model is in the game for sure. But yeah, I have not scanned her over at Brewster's. That'd be great. I wonder if she talks about LaBelle label. I... Mm. Oh, I, now I want to scan uh. her. <laughs> yeah. Or if they go to, if they go together. Ooh, they bring Ooh. each other along. I wonder. Yeah, because there are are those cases, you know, where they both visit each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I'm gonna have to try that out. That sounds really cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, I feel like I, there was something I wanted to say, Sergio. The, these are all so good. Like, th <laughs> this also feels like it points out just. 
label was kind of a missed opportunity, I think. I feel mm. like she could have grown into that role of being the high-end able sister designer, you know? True. Um, and all we really get from her is, like, she's got her clothing set, you know? Right. But the, what's really missing is that designer furniture for me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nina, what's your next one? Um. My next one, actually, I'm going to flip because my number three kind of goes along with this, where I miss our main buildings growing. Um, I mean, we have seen some yeah. growth, especially with the museum. We got the diving mm. creatures, the art gallery, and now the roost, too. too. But um, And I guess Nook's grew once but i i think the able sisters their story could grow so much with label eventually if you have her enough times oh. she can bring her label brand to the able sisters store um i think there's room still for nook's cranny to grow it's still yes. quite small mm-hmm. um and you know Gracie Grace was always on top of another store. So we can work that into like you won't lose land on your yes, island because it yes. could just go up. Mm-hmm. I'd love um for on top of the Able Sisters, if LaBelle like moves in downstairs stairs, then um Flick and CJ could have like a vlog slash art studio above Able's together. Oh. I think that'd be so cute. To um to kind of see more growth with their characters, they've been very stagnant in this game. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know though that kind of like growth of the stores brings more storyline to the characters, um, which is what I always enjoy in Animal Crossing games. So I I think we're missing a lot of building growth in this. Yes, definitely. I think that was something that uh, I had kind of as like my bonus stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. I wrote like an invisible list next to it. And I was like, oh, maybe you'll both put these things, right? <laughs> so Sergio already mentioned with his first one, the street pass, but this one was just like shops on the island. Yeah. Like I think we, I mean, Able Sisters and Nook's Cranny, they're both really cute stores and they're really nice to like place on the island itself and decorate around it. And I would have loved more of that, you know, just having more buildings that we could work around and dedicate toward specific things. And so just seeing that aspect of the kind of, I guess it's not as town buildy as I think it could have been, you know, mm-hmm. right. the game. And this felt like the chance to make it so, but maybe, I don't know if it's just like the hardware didn't allow them to do it. I, maybe they just had different plans from the start. So yeah, I don't, I don't know, but I, I do hope that the next game goes further into this direction because yeah. th- that was the big thing I wanted from the get-go, like going from New Leaf to whatever was next, right? Back right, at the time, right. I was just like, I don't want a main street this time around. I want to integrate the shops into the town instead of having to go to a separate place, another loading screen in order to access them, you know? Right. And now they're like hidden kind of behind two loading screens. You have to go into the airport and then fly there. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's a, it's a bit too much. So getting more of those on there and even, you know, you're finding workarounds to what they're currently doing. Like just build on top of Able Sisters, add a floor, build another floor to Nick's Granny and yeah. Yeah. they'd fit. And the buildings don't have to be huge. They already use kind of like a force perspective or or even like, you know, a TARDIS type thing where they're they're mm-hmm. way bigger on the inside than they are on the outside. So they don't have to be enormous um, and they don't have to take away from like the cutesy island look. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I just they I feel like I feel like they just weren't pushed far enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just I, I agree. I'm right there too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So my next one, I I'm gonna swap out with one of my bonus ones for this one because I think it's a little bit smaller. But 
uh, we're kind of on the same topic, building exterior customizations. Uh, I think yes. we got a, f- a couple of these back in New Leaf where we could change the uh, town hall and the train station, right? Mm-hmm. And I don't know, it just felt like a lot of that was more built around being able to go with a certain theme. And now that we have all of these tools in order to work toward a theme in the exterior, the one aspect, the buildings is missing from that, you know, like people are doing such a great job of like committing to a theme on their islands and then making it happen and then having to use simple panels or something around it (laughs) in order to give the building the look that they want, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's a little bit of a pain, (laughs) kind of a bummer that they can't just like have the buildings the way they want them to be. So Building exterior customization would just be such a cool thing for the game. I think it's just, say, I don't know. I I think back to Nook's Cranny when it finally turned into, like, the Emporium in New Leaf. That building is not cute. (laughs) It's it's so, like, gaudy, the bright lights and everything. It's a lot. And if we got to that size, Nook's Cranny... I would want to change the exterior Mm -hmm. if I were, if we had that store in New Horizons, you know? So, and and, I mean, like, I'm happy because I do think the current stores work really well for whatever I'm going for, you know? But I'm sure other people are like, oh, I wish I could make, change this theme and make it something different, you know? Right. Yeah. Uh, Sergio? You're you're on your third one here. Yes, and it's related to to your first one. I'm I'm definitely with you. I think the mini games are a big miss. Um, and and even if it wasn't uh, four versus four, which makes a lot of sense. And honestly, I don't know why we didn't get any of that. I mean, Nintendo knows what they're doing. Hopefully, um, but even if it had been just four player mini games, kind of like we had in New Leaf, that would have been nice. Or even just like whatever we had in Amiibo Festival. I know, <laughs> I know that's, that's a little <laughs> sacrilege there, but it, it had some mini games. It had some fun experiences like the Desert Island Escape. Would have been nice to have something like that here, um, even yeah. if it wasn't multiplayer. Like just a little something extra. Um, also, the Puzzle League game that we got in New Leaf, that was a lot of fun too. Just something mm-hmm. to, to shake up the formula. I'm even thinking, you know how we have the Nintendo Switch Online and it's basically a collection of all their games. If you sign in, you can sort of connect with people and play the games together online via multiplayer. If there was a way to connect that to Animal Crossing, so basically if you're in somebody's island or somebody is on your island and you're just playing Animal Crossing, but then you think, you know what, let's play one of those older games. And that would be like a nice way to bring back the GameCube or or the the Nintendo systems that we had on uh, population growing, right? It was a way to play those games in Animal Crossing. They could sort of bring that back if they let us play the Nintendo Switch Online games in New Horizons. Um, even if they just lock it to multiplayer, it would be a nice way to sort of bring back the nostalgia because I know a lot of people really liked Animal Crossing because of those games back then so Mm -hmm. it'd be a nice way to connect that in to get people to play the Nintendo Switch Online games too Mm -hmm. yeah for sure yeah and I I said it before I just want mini games they'd be fun (laughs) to have (laughs) Nina what's your third one um my Third one is another one that I kind of drew and came up with before the game, way Ooh. before the game came out. But <laughs> I want homes for the special characters. Oh, <laughs> I, gosh. I miss them. I like I want Isabel to have time off and to see her if I get up early enough, see her walk to work or walk home. Um, I want to be able to visit them in their homes where they're, you know, in their regular clothes, drinking coffee in the evening. Um, And I think a great way to work around, again, not taking space up on your island, is for their homes to be built into, like, the exterior cliffs, you know, that we used to kind of have... before we were an island. <laughs> like if we still had like that back kind of barrier cliff or something, they could have little oh, town homes that, yes. that you know, yeah. fit back into that cliff. Um, I, yeah, I just want 
Timmy, Tommy, and Nook, and Isabel to have happy homes to go home to. <laughs> you know, I want them to sleep. Yeah. Yeah, I guess the only way around it at this point is giving them a little vacation home. Yeah. Or, like, I know Timmy and Tommy have that little ladder to their upstairs area. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Let us up there. Yeah, like, let... we could visit in there. <laughs> yes, it would be so cute. Yeah, and it kind of, like, recreates the magic of finally finding Rossetti's place, you know? Yeah. That's been kind of a thing in previous games, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just going back to being able to find them. And, oh, man, yeah, I think the first appearance of this was the final version of the GameCube game, Animal Forest E+, only out in Japan. There, If you hit the back of Nook's shop with, yeah. like, a shovel or an <laughs> axe, like, three times or something, the door would open up and you could go in and shop late at night there. And Nook and would be in his little PJ. Yeah, Yeah, you would. Yeah. So uh, it was see? a really cute thing, but <laughs> yeah, we don't really get to see them outside of their jobs. Maybe resident services has like either up in the attic or <laughs> down in little <laughs> underground burrows. <laughs> They've got little apartments <laughs> where they sleep. I, oh, yeah, I just want them to be humanized a little bit more, especially with resident service being open 24 seven. Um, mm -hmm. Nook and Isabel don't feel very real this time around. Yeah. 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 And especially Isabel, like from, yeah. from the time you get her to, I don't know, the rest of the game, it's just like so few interactions with her. It's kind of a bummer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I love that. I think that'd be really cute. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. All right. My last one. This one, I... Honestly, would have told you that this was going to happen. This felt like the natural progression of the game to me, especially like a game that's so focused on the goal of getting your house, paying it off, making it bigger, doing it over and over again until there's nothing left, you know? To me, the idea of moving to an island and paying off those like moving fees at the beginning. I thought that was going to indicate, like, eventually you're going to pay off your island fee and be able to make it bigger, you know? Yeah. Add some sand, extend the land a little bit. Just, I don't know. I thought that was going to be a thing. So I think maybe in the future this might be possible. Uh, I've seen it happen in other games where it's like, uh, I think Littlewood was like you could pay the person and they would clear out more of the forest and make the map a bigger for you, you know. Mm. And so I think there are cool ways that that could happen. But as of right now, it's like, nope, this island is what we get and we can't make it any bigger. But I, if you asked me before the game came out, I was saying, yes, you'd be able to grow your island. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 Mm. So that's that's my third one. Uh, I'm hoping eventually it does kind of go that way because I, I do want that town building growth aspect to be a part of the series going forward. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. want there to be cool shops that we can get and, you know, build, uh, build on our islands or wherever the next location is. And I don't know. I just feel like it'd be more fun to have that integrated into the space. And, you know, it gives you more ways to decorate and make it cool. So... Yeah, and then it, it once you run makes... out of room, grow the island, make it bigger, <laughs> add more things. <laughs> um, and maybe growing it unlocks more shops that you can get. I don't know. There's a lot to work with with that idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. It kind of makes me wonder if, you know, it, it wanting to keep it like feeling like a desert island is one thing. Um, but kind of using the desert island as an excuse to not let us upgrade is another. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sometimes it's mm -hmm. it's backing themselves into a corner almost. So, um, yeah, maybe hopefully next next iteration is a little more modern, which you know kind of goes against. <laughs> I I really have enjoyed the desert island aspect of it, but 
you know, if we get back to the city or back to, I don't know, <laughs> suburbs or I don't know, outer space, I don't know. Um, if, Planet. If we could keep, <laughs> keep growing forward would be great. Yeah, I keep thinking of like, what's going to be the next thing to make this I- these ideas go further? And I'm just like, all right, we're getting our own planets next time. <laughs> <laughs> Cloud city. Yeah. <laughs> There, there, there's a lot of ways I think this could, these ideas could grow, and I guess we won't know what they decide to do until they do it. But right. yeah, it's fun to see how it progresses. So I, I had a couple bonus things. Like I said, I changed one out. One was just like sound options for patterns. Oh. I oh, want yes, to, yes. if we make a wooden pattern like Sergio, just uh, apply a wood sound to the footsteps. So you know. I, I don't know. I, is it that hard? Probably. I don't no. develop games or know how to code those <laughs> things, but uh, uh, is it easy to come up with that idea? Sure. <laughs> 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 yeah. So I don't know. I just think like if you're making custom patterns, I, the one thing I'm missing from it is I want to hear my little footsteps sound like they're on that floor. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then this other one, It's one that doesn't work for this setting, I don't think. Because we're on an island, I don't think this works fundamentally. But an idea we had a long time ago on this show was traveling by camper when we were coming up with, like, modes Mm. of transportation. And I was like, yeah, I really liked the OK Motors crew. Mm -hmm. I really liked the idea of, like, oh, instead of, you know, some sort of gatekeeper town border thing like we can just like hop in our van and drive somewhere you know Mm -hmm. but on top of that what I liked about that camper idea is like giving you another space to not only like update and build but it's also like you can decorate it you can make it something different so that way when you go and land in somebody's little camper site on their place when you visit they can go into your camper and visit and see like how you've got that place organized and everything. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, it brings that sharing design aspect to both people because, you know, it's still pretty one-sided. You go to an Island and you're like, okay, cool. I'm seeing everything that you made and I can't really share everything that I made with you (laughs) unless we, you know, all take the 30 minutes it takes to disconnect (laughs) and then travel back to the new island, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't work on an island because campers don't swim, but Mm. maybe. (laughs) What, houseboats? It could have been houseboats. It could have been... Houseboats, yeah. Our own little dodo. Like, there's lots of workarounds. Just something with okay motors because they're cute. Yeah, Yeah. they're adorable. (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah, those are all the ideas. I think there's definitely a lot of room to keep growing the ideas for Animal Crossing and keep making the games better and better. And I do feel like they're they're still doing a lot of cool new things that make it... uh, I mean, old school fans will tell you, you know, it's a different experience from what they're used to. But (laughs) I don't know. I've played so many games... Uh, so many Animal Crossing games at this point that I'm like, I'm very welcoming of these new ideas, I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, this morning, I was driving back from <laughs> California. Uh, the trip had ended, so I forgot to, you know, post a Haken's Islander Corner question for everybody on Patreon. But... I decided, you know what? I don't know why we haven't done this before. I will also post this over on Patreon so you can leave your answers there. But just so you know, there is a question. What do you think the setting for the next Animal Crossing Mm. will be? Oh, Mm. I can't wait to read these. Yeah, these should be really fun. So be on the lookout. I'll post it up on Patreon probably the Wednesday after this episode goes up, which is, you know, Tuesday as per usual. So be on the lookout for that. And we're excited to see your answers because this is a a fun little question. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Haken, an Animal Crossing podcast. If you're sad to see us go... Join us over on Discord. You can talk with other people who love Animal Crossing as much as you do, including Sergio, Nina, and me. The link is in the description. 
Want to support Haken in a bigger way and tell us your answers to the Haken Islander Corner? Head over to patreon.com slash chewyplays. One dollar goes a long way to making this show even better and includes tons of goodies for you to enjoy. Get a special role on Discord, read a monthly newsletter, and get many other great rewards. We really appreciate the support and put your money towards some great things on the show. If you're listening on YouTube, what do you think the setting for the next Animal Crossing will be? Reviews really help the show get discovered by more people. Please leave a review on your platform of choice and let us know how we're doing. Haken is a wild production brought to you by Chewy, Sergio, Nina, and all of our patrons. We thank you for listening and we hope you have a great week. Goodbye, everybody. See you all next time.